Hey everyone, it's Wingspan TT, and if you're watching, you know what time it is. No, it's not time to finish personalizing your Windows 8 start screen. It's time to play Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013. We are coming back now for Game 3 between King Kang and the Hassle. They're each 1-1 one one in the Grand Finals of the Top Tier Tactics Duels of the Planeswalkers 2013 January PC Tournament. And it appears that the Hassle is keeping his two land hand. He doesn't have anything really other than Innocent Blood. Oh, okay. He's got Innocent Blood. He has this little minus one, minus one card in there. He hates this matchup. Fair enough. I do can I can definitely understand why Obedient Dead would hate the matchup against Crosswinds for a couple reasons. One is that Crosswinds has very few like creatures, so a lot of the removal in um, in Obedient Dead simply goes to waste. You know, using Innocent Blood to make someone sack a creature isn't worth a lot when your opponent doesn't have any creatures, or their creatures a zero four um, Kraken Hatchling, or they or they have a whole fleet of two two flying tokens that sacking one of them really isn't going to do anything. So that kind of disparity is a big problem. The other problem Obedient ha Dead has against Crosswinds is the fact that it just does not have answers for certain things. Obedient Dead cannot stop Panoptic Mirror. Obedient Dead is hugely vulnerable to something like Bribery, and those are just bomb cards that, that if Obedient Dead Seeds hits the table, it's probably going to be in a lot of trouble. Here he's going to be dropping his, probably his Warlock, it's the only thing he can play, 2-2, two, two. can't be blocked for all intents and purposes in this matchup. So now Kangsta is on a 10 turn clock, he's got 10 turns to survive, deal something, do something with this 2-2, two, two. of course. Uh, most of his blockers can't do anything about it, so even if he got a Kraken Hatchling on the board or Fog Bank or anything like that, he won't be blocking this. This is essentially completely unblockable. He could bounce it later, get some tempo advantage, but of course, there is going to be whole all kinds of advantage coming to the hassle. He is now able to drop his Liliana Shades with his Swamp here. Um, go fetch out extra Swamps, get more Swamps. He's going to be fetching Swamps all day long. He can sign in blood, draw some cards, start getting some card advantage. He is falling behind with five cards in hand now to Kangsta's uh, seven, but I believe Kangsta, of course, did play second, so um, actually that doesn't really explain anything. Uh, here we go. So now Kangsta's in a bit of a pickle. Game three, they're taught, you know, they went into this one and one. Uh, the first game ran rather long. Um, the second game, significantly shorter. I do feel like there were some misplays by both players, both in game one and game two, and I, I really am interested to see if, if you know, simple mistakes are going to cost these players the game one more time. Now again, I am not familiar with what happens in these games at all. I'm watching it just as you are right now. We see the swing in, of course, pre-combat, whether or not he wants to play anything second main phase. I'm pretty sure Kangsta is just going to let this fly. Excuse me, here we go, Liliana Shade getting pumped three times, leaving just enough for the sign in blood post-combat. He knows he's completely safe, there's no Dispel or Repulse coming to stop his creatures. Going down 12 life, Kangsta in a world of trouble now as far as damage goes, he has no way to deal with these Shades. And that is, you know, if he had a Fog Bank, that'd be great. Um, it doesn't even look like the Hassle would have a way to stop Fog Bank. I mean, I guess, okay, he's got Massacre Worm, which is a way to pretty much stop everything in the game. And might as well just swing. Take the damage, get your damage in. If Kangsta can manage to drop another Talrans Invocation, get two more 2-2s two on the board, that would, in theory, be good for him, and that's exactly what he plays. But of course, what he doesn't know is that Massacre Worm is coming. We can see the hassle queuing up Massacre Worm in his hand, getting ready to play it with delighted glee, and here it comes, the Massacre Worm. Bum ba dum and Kangsta is not going to be happy about that. That's basically going to be the end of the game. GG, coming to his side of the board. Eight life going down to four. Um... The Hassle now swinging in for three. Absolutely brutal. You know what's actually funny is he could have won this turn if he had actually signed in blood on Kangsta last turn. Uh, he would have dealt the two damage to Kangsta. Of course, in most gameplay situations, that is completely suicidal. There's absolutely no reason to do that. And uh, I, I completely understand that the Hassle wouldn't want to take a risk like that. But, you know, I'm just saying he would have won this turn. And I don't believe there's anything in Kangsta's deck that's going to save him now. Uh, even if he could mind control the worm or something like that, he just wouldn't have enough available to block all those creatures. Um, time warp. He's going to get a free turn. Fine. A free turn to uh, draw, a draw a card, untap, and that's pretty much it. I guess he could get a time warp into twin cast to get two more turns now that he's got seven lana on the board. Uh, but I really don't think that's going to save him. Write a replication a single time. Okay, okay, all right, I totally forgot about this. So now 
his because the hassle's tapped out, he's gonna be losing four life, losing his two other creatures. Now he's got a board trade situation. Of course, the hassle has the ability to force uh, Kang to sacrifice. He could drop innocent blood. For, uh, he could drop. Well, I would drop Lilia, Liliana Shade first, um, then drop innocent blood, then sacrifice the shade, and then swing in for six. And that would basically be game. So if that doesn't happen, I'm gonna be pretty surprised. He's got Crippling Blight. I don't... What is the play here? Why is he... His creature is minus one, minus one. Is it that it can't block? Is that it? I'm, I'm not even vaguely familiar with this. And that's it. Right, it gets minus one, minus one. Can't block. Here comes the Massacre Worm. And here comes the Disperse, ladies and gentlemen. So, I kind of feel that... I don't know. I guess I feel that, that the Innocent Blood now would be the best play. Not playing Innocent Blood would seem like a really bad idea. Just force him to sacrifice his creature so he has nothing on the board. So anything you play is going to be over. And I don't see why the hassle is taking so long to make his decision. Innocent Blood also at this point. Now this could be mana. No, it can't be mana. At least he doesn't have the mana. Um, you could have cast Innocent Blood while you didn't have any creatures on the board. And then you would have been totally fine. So I don't see the play here. I do feel it's pretty much inevitable now that the hassle is going to win. But if... Kangsta gets another Rite of Replication, uh, there's going to be a big fucking problem here. Alright, okay, not Rite of Replication. Future Sight. Revealing Rite of Replication off the top of the deck. Alright. Alright, but of course, of course Kangsta is going to be forced to jump block next turn and lose his creature. I don't know what the hassle was doing. This game could have, should have just been locked down, completely locked down already. And I just... I don't see where this is going. Anyway, I do want to remind everyone that the winner of the tournament will be getting um, magic cards, real magic packs. I assume it's going to be Gatecrash because Gatecrash is what all the cool kids are into nowadays. I would personally choose Magic 2013 because I'm a total magic hipster. Um, and of course that game goes to the hassle. They'll also be getting DLC deck pack codes in case they don't have them yet or if they just want to give them to their friends who have the game. So they'll get some DLC deck pack codes. And of course, a Mayanis Ensys 320 aluminum polished keyboard. Really premium. Typically goes for like $50. Uh, really, really nice for any PC gamer. I think um, it's a nice little booster. Second place will get magic cards and the DLC deck packs. They're not going to be getting any kind of Ensys, Mayonics, anything like that. They're just going to be getting a pat on the back. And the fact that they know that even though they didn't come in first place, they still beat 97 other people, essentially, in this tournament. So here we have Kangsta coming in second. It is now 3... Uh, I believe it is 2-1. 2-1. Hassle to Kangsta. Kangsta's got to prove himself and come back. If he can win this game, he's going to tie it up, force this series into Game 5. But it does look like that the Hassle has a really strong starting hand. I would be personally surprised. I, I'm surprised he played Vampire Nighthawk. Uh, I guess he could have played Crippling Blight. Uh, no, okay, I'm not so surprised. I guess the Nighthawk's going to force um, Azure Mage to not get kind of any attack. Crippling Blight can always be played next turn, but hey, Crippling Blight could also possibly get uh, countered next turn. So we'll see. We do have two mana open. Could be for a mana leak, although I guess it couldn't get Cannon Narrow because he's going to, uh, because the Hassle's going to have his Fourth Swamp on the board. Will he play it first main? Yes, he will. And he's going to swing in the air, bringing King Kang down to 18, him going up to 22. Now the clock is widening every turn. I really am interested to see what happens. I feel like he's just going to play Crippling Blight on Sting before, before Kangsta can hit four lane and possibly get a free card out of it. Um, here comes the Mana Leak. And of course now the Crippling Blight is going to be free, killing the Azure Mage. But his unblockable creature is not getting on the board. Let's see it. Minus one, minus one. It has to happen. It has to happen. And I would laugh so hard if he accidentally Crippling blighted his own vampire Nighthawk. Here we go. Goodbye. Kangsta five cards in hand. The Hassle three cards in hand. Kangsta pulling into a, what appears to not be a fourth land, but of course that's not. Nope. There we go. Fourth land, Talran's Invocation. Definitely a good play on his part. He could double block. He would lose. Um, no, I guess he'd only lose one creature. Pretty good there. Myers Toll. We're going to see Kangsta's hand now. Hassle's going to be picking something out of his hand. Um, and uh, let's see. All right. Talran, Future Sight, Disperse. I feel like the Future Sight would have to go. Personally, I would get rid of the Future Sight. Um, everything else could be dealt with. Disperse, only temporary setback. Talran's Invocation, well, you already got two on the board. If you hit an Infect or something like that, it's going to be a problem. Future Sight, if that hits the board, 
Uh, the Hassle's got no answer for it. He has no way to stop it once it hits the board. It is absolutely game-winning card advantage, and he doesn't have cards in his hand that are powerful enough to like guarantee he could win before Future Sight provides the card advantage needed, so he does choose that as the discard. Now going into his combat phase, will he swing? No, he's going to leave it back. Um, yeah, thought it'd be an easier choice. See, I thought it was an easy choice. Kangsta thought it was an easier choice, and maybe you kids at home thought it was an easier choice. Now we do see um, Kangsta playing an island. Did he just top deck an island, or was that the island that was already in his hand? That's part of the mind games of, you know, what do you keep in your hand? Now I don't, I guess I see here there's no reason for Kangsta to swing into this. He can, as long as he keeps his creatures back, he's going to not be on a clock. He is going to force the hassle to just lose all of his previous momentum. The Nentuku Shade is coming down. I'm surprised we don't see a counter here. Um, although it's possible that if Kangsta has a Fog Bank or something like that, he's totally willing to let the Nantuko Shade happen. But I think if he had Fog Bank, he would have played it. We saw what was in his hand before. We know he has Dispel, right? So we know that anytime he wants, he could bounce this Nantuko Shade. So if uh, if the Hassle tries to pump it for like 8 mana, boom! You just wasted your whole turn, you tapped out, it's going back to your hand. And of course, the Hassle is completely cognizant of that threat. I feel like uh, Kangsta is in a pretty good position here. There's really nothing still that the Hassle has on the board that's a complete threat that Crosswinds can't deal with. Um, it's never easy. Uh, no, that's not true. No, it's not true. Not in the finals. I see the nerves. The nerves are getting the Hassle. And here we see Talran's Invocation hitting the board. Now he's got eyes in the sky all over the place. He's got eight potential damage. And if he wanted, he could end a turn, you know, disperse Vampire Night Nighthawk, swing in for eight damage. Um, and then next turn swinging for 6 damage, I mean, he could just make life miserable for the Hassle. It's not going to be complete shutdown, but it is going to be a problem. We see the Exsanguinate hit sitting in Hassle's hand, just waiting to deal a lot of damage. How much damage could he tap for? 3, 4, 5, 6, so he could make his Shade an 8, 7 creature. But that means that uh, his uh, blockers could definitely actually take it down. He could take it down with all these creatures, he could just block with everything. He could force Kangsta to use up all his mana just to a trade. And now of course Kangsta here has to decide how many times does he want to tap. He's just going to go for two, leave his options open for post combat. He doesn't want to play into the disperse game where he taps out all his mana only to get, to, only to get it uh, bounced back to his hand. And here comes the disperse anyway. On the Vampire Nighthawk, just like a uh, Vampire Nighthawk. Sorry, I have to enunciate. Sometimes I just get so excited. The finals match, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I waited a month. I was watching the brackets. I was talking to the players. I was watching these these couple four decks claw their way to the top. So we had some other decks make it pretty far. Peacekeepers made it pretty far. Um, what was it? Uh, Peacekeepers made it pretty far. Mana Mastery, two players playing Mana Mastery, made it pretty far into this tournament. Um, and some other, of course, other random decks made it pretty far. We do see the Dread, now a p distinct possibility. But of course the question is, does Kangsta have a counter? Does Kangsta have a mind control or something like that? Uh, just something that is going to make the hassle Dread playing Dread. I don't know. And of course, he would have to tap out for this, meaning that he can't swing with the Shade and get any additional mana pumping out of it too. He's checking the graveyard to see if there's any threats, counting the threats. Here we go, hitting the board or not, Kangs is contemplating, and there's the cancel. There's the cancel. Dread is not going to be happening anytime soon. And keep in mind that Kangsta is very aware that one of the cards in the Hassle's hand is the Vampire Nighthawk. He won't be playing it this turn. He won't be swinging for damage to Shade this turn. I don't know why Kangsta kept back his one Drake token last turn. I don't understand why. He knew that even if the Vampire Nighthawk got played again, it would have summoning sickness. So it's not like it could have swung in with him. And I guess he could trade here. He could totally trade. Yes, okay, maybe this is why. Maybe he wanted to force um, the Hassle into a bad decision to choose between tapping out, but I don't think he knew that the Hassle had some kind of 6 mana play. And here we go, the other future site. That is not something the Hassle wants to see. We are immediately seeing a cancel on top of the deck, which is another thing uh, the Hassle doesn't want to see. He has no board presence whatsoever. He's got a Vampire Nighthawk that yeah, it might see the board, but that's not enough to win the game, just Vampire Nighthawk by itself. And he now knows that the Kangsta is going to be able to counter, you know, in a turn from now, whatever he, ha he has. So Van I feel like Vampire Nighthawk has to hit the board. Um, the Warlock has to hit the board. He needs to get some kind of unblockable damage. He needs to get this stuff through before Kangsta can draw into his top deck, his future sighted cards. And it's so intimidating to see that cancel sitting there. And yes, it's true. 
Yes, it's true. It would be better to have the cancel in hand and not know uh, that he has it. And here we go. The free island off the top of the deck. The bribery off the type of top of the deck. Oh, I believe that's bribery. Um, and I believe the hassle is not even going to zoom into it because he just knows it's bribery. Look, it's foil. It's got the big fat genie on it. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I don't see this turned around now. I believe Kangsta is going to be taking this. He's going to be tying up 2-2, two, two, which means that this series is going to... What? Not playing bribery. What could possibly be in his hand other than the counter? I guess he's got the counter, so he doesn't want to play bribery. He's afraid of what kangsta has got in his hand. Uh, kangsta wants to wait. Uh, I mean, he's afraid of what the hassle has in his hand. He wants to be able to cast bribery and have the counter spell to back it up in one turn. I'm sure he's afraid that he's going to get something with bribery only to see uh, all his time go to waste. It's true, like, what would he get? If he got Desecration uh, Massacre Worm, I guess he would kill off the 2-2. Two, two. Um, he could, of course, get Massacre Worm, and there we go. There's the top deck island. Now he can bribery safely, still have the three mana left over to cancel to stop any single crippling play uh, from the hassle. And of course the Kangsta has to figure out here, what is he going to do? I feel like this is a misplay. I feel like he should have done the bribery first. Why is he swinging into a Vampire Nighthawk? So he's going to force the block because he's going to go get... Okay. Because he thinks the hassle is not going to fall for this. Now I don't know if I were the hassle. I guess I would have blocked. But of course now the bribery is going to come out. And now that the damage has been dealt to the Nighthawk, here comes Massacre Worm. Here comes Massacre Worm. Not to be uh, in any way... Uh, mistaken for Honey Boo Boo. The hassle is going to be going down to four life. Ladies and gentlemen, it is over next turn unless he can absolutely do something to stop this. He can do an Exsanguinate, I guess, for six, which is going to put him up to ten. Going to bring Kangsta down to six. That's probably the best play because that means that if the hassle top decks, if the hassle top decks, oh no, it's not going to matter because Kangsta's got canceled. Like, see, even I'm forgetting this, but of course I'm not playing the game. That is not enough to stop anything bad from happening. Exsanguinate is not going to be occurring. And I believe at this point the hassle is just going to be like sitting in his grave. Now if I were Kangsta, I would not be countering this. There's no point to countering it. It is not going to win you the game to counter it. I mean, will it? No, he's a four life. He's going to lose either way. I would, uh, four, he was going to, what, gain four life, go to like eight. He still would have died. Wouldn't have countered it. I don't know. And there we go. We see Kangsta being a good sport. Just not going for non-overkill damage. Now, personally, I go for the overkill damage. Not to be a jerk. I don't cast a million extra spells just to waste time. Um, but the point you go for the overkill damage is because you never know when this game is going to bug out. When you hit tap a creature and it doesn't tap. Or the game decides it's going to progress to the attack stage before you want it to. Or maybe you just miscalculate. You just did the math bad in your head. So we are now in the final game of the final match of the grand finals of our January tournament. And, um, whoa, this is rough. So these two decks, Titan, Control decks, Slow decks, but decks with a lot of tools, decks with a lot of um, ability to stave off the faster decks. You know, we went through, I think it was seven, possibly eight uh, different rounds of play going into this. And both of these players had to defeat a lot of really good players to make it this far. Here we have... The uh, Jet Medallion, I believe I called it the Emerald or the Mox or something like that in the last match uh, in the last match video. But it is the Jet Medallion reducing black spells for you by one colorless mana. And we did see that the colorless mana requirement did kind of screw over the hassle previously. I don't know for a fact that he was betting on that Nintoko Shade costing one and one black. But it cost two black. Um, there we go. Now we do see that uh, our good friend Necrotal there has got nothing to do. And we have, oh, the hassle passing a second main. It's so painful. He opts to play Liliana Shade instead of, I'm sorry, he he opts to play uh, Liliana Spectre instead of Liliana Shade. I feel like that was a mistake. I feel like it's almost always better to play Liliana Shade when your opponent has fewer cards in hand. With seven, he had seven cards, maybe six cards in hand. He had, oh, what are the odds that he doesn't have a throwaway card, a card that he can afford to throw away? Liliana Shade would have forced him to possibly use counter magic, get the counter magic out of his, his hand. That would have brought him down to five cards in hand. Then next turn, when you cast Liliana Shade after he played something else, you would have had less of a chance that he has a counter. He has to ditch something else. He's going to be defenseless. It's going to be hilarious. So I feel like that was a bad play on the hassle's part, but you know, certainly not catastrophic, certainly not something that's going to cost him the game just not completely optimal. And here comes Liliana Shade. 
um, indubitably this turn. Here comes Liliana Shade. Here it comes. Is it getting countered? Nope. It's going straight through. Does that mean that Kangsta has some kind of blocker? Does that mean Kangsta's got bounce? Does he have a repulse? Does he have fog bank? Something to hold back Liliana Shade. I wouldn't be surprised anyway. It's also possible he is sitting on Talran's invocation or Talran himself, which of course would be extremely painful for him since uh, the hassle. Oh, it's got like that Bane quote. It would, it would be extremely painful for you. All right. Anyway, um, getting the Necrotal out. And here we have followed footsteps. Oh! Oh, okay. I see where this is going. All right, so he's going to be getting free discard and a free 2-1 flyer every turn. And now, if I were the hassle, I'd be killing my own creature. I'd be killing my own creature post-combat because well, I don't think he could afford to, to have his opponent get a free creature and force him to discard a card every turn for the rest of the game. So here we go in here. I guess Liliana Spectre is going to be pumped for 2. Um, going in for 2. Leaving the Tendrils of Corruption option open. And of course, doing this his turn before Kangsta untaps, before this extra thing can be done. Tendrils of Corruption on his own creature. Uh, he'll be gaining a bunch of life, going up to <laughs> going up to 25 life. Kangsta getting robbed in a way, but when you think about it, what happened here? Kangsta spent one card, followed footsteps, and he forced the hassle to use up both his Spectre and his Tendrils of Corruption. Um, yes, his opponent's now 25 life, but he just has a Spectre on the board to worry about. So he just needs to get some kind of defense, and uh, that would pretty much be it. Of course, if uh, the Hassle didn't have some kind of removal, it would be pretty hilarious. Here we have the Time Warp for the Kangs to take an extra turn, going to God knows what. I don't know what's possibly going to happen. Playing his extra land, going down to six lands, three cards in hand, and taking his extra turn. I feel like it's possible the Kangs is in trouble unless he gets Panoptic Mirror, unless he gets... Um, I don't know. Here we go. This is good. All right, that's good. He's getting his Arcane Mancer. What will he take back? He is opting for Sleight of Hand. I guess he just wants something. He wants to dig in his deck. I don't know if that's the best. I guess that was the best option. Another Time Warp would have pretty much been a waste of time. At least now he gets to draw a card. He gets to get some more cards. He's hitting, hitting so many lands. He's at seven lands now. I feel like he's made every single land drop, which means he must have drawn a large number of lands. Having a 1-2 creature on the board, of course, is not particularly impressive. When there's this much pressure, the Necrotal hitting the board, clearing out the Archaeomancer, unless a counter comes, I don't see that happening. Um, Liliana Shade being able to swing in now for, I believe, one damage. If I were him, I would take the second Liliana Shade next turn. There's no point to not overwhelming Crosswinds. Crosswinds can deal with powerful creatures, and it can deal with all kinds of things. And here, do we have the counter? No, he's tapping out. I feel like Liliana Shade second main would have been the best play. Um, get another creature on the board, so if he gets Fog Banks or gets any other defense down, it won't be able to get stopped. Um, get the extra Swamp out of your deck, so it's less likely you get it. Here comes the Future Sight, and we see another Future Sight on the top of the deck. That is painful. That is absolutely painful to see when you're in this situation. There's almost any other card in his deck would have been better to see. Even an Island, a uh, Counter Magic, Balance, a Creature, um, anything would have been better. And now... The game is pretty much over, I think, unless uh, unless the ha unless the Kangsta's got some kind of secret tech. Does he have some kind of secret tech coming out? Does he have bounce? I don't see it happening here. The shade is going to get pumped. You have to pump the shade. He's going to just going to pump it one at a time each time. Force the Kangsta to reveal his damage. No, he's not going to get greedy. And here comes the corrupt on Kangsta. Does Kangsta have the counter to prevent corrupt? He does. Mana leak mana leak so I kind of question now I guess um, yep he should have pumped out of course if he had Liliana Spectre if he had the second Liliana Spectre on the board right now it would have made it really hard for Kangs to deal with it oh oh bribery what bribery what and the fog bank sitting at the top of his deck here comes Master Worm there go all of his creatures and fog bank of course coming out to put out his defense wow a really big turnaround I did not see that coming Five pink off the top of the deck. We see Disperse sitting at the top of the deck. So he's got bounce options also. Very nice. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I was wrong. It's possible Kang could turn this around because Dread and Liliana Spectre are not particularly... Oh! Exsanguinate. Oh, there we go. There we go. The top deck Exsanguinate. This is going to be the game winning card. Ladies and gentlemen, it is all over. The Hassle wins with Obedient Dead winning the top tier tactics. 
January Duels of Planeswalkers 2013 tournament. Congratulations to him for being our first place winner. Congratulations to King Kang for being our second place winner. And I hope you'll come back, everyone, next time for my next video, for our next tournament, for the next hype, for the next top deck. I'll see you all next time. Cheers.